Hello, this is Vesso from Chaos. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how we can create a wood material. We'll also look at how we can add some wear and tear to the wood surface to make it look more believable. First, we'll start by creating a base wood material. After that, we'll start adding details such as scratches and wear around the edges to make the wooden object look like it's been used for a while. Next, we'll add some dirt that accumulated over time in the crevices of the object. And finally, we'll add some dust to make our wood material complete. With all that being said, let's get started. Here in 3ds Max, we have a simple scene setup that would work nicely for our needs. Let me go ahead and open the V-Ray frame buffer and start the interactive rendering. We have a standard V-Ray material applied to the object. I'll go ahead and give it a name just to keep things organized. This is going to be our wood base material. There are many types of wood surfaces that could be created. There is no way to show them all. That's why we'll focus on one in this tutorial and basically following the same logic, you can apply this approach to make any type of wood. Since the wood material usually has some sort of grain or pattern, we can start by finding an image of a real wood on the internet or even photograph one ourselves if it's more specific. I have used a texture image of wood that I've got from Chaos Cosmos. There is a normal map of the same wood too, which is great. Let me go ahead and connect the normal map to the bump channel and increase its value to 100. I'll also plug in the diffuse texture into the diffuse slot. Great! I'd like the grain of the wood to go in the vertical direction, so I'll use a V-Ray UVW randomizer node and plug it into the mapping source of both the diffuse and the normal texture. Now I'll rotate it by 90 degrees using the angle field for the W axis. I'll also enable stochastic tiling to help eliminate any visible tiling patterns. At this point, we can make some color corrections of the wood if we want to. I'd like to make the wood darker, so I'll bring in a color correction node and put it in between the diffuse texture and the material itself. Then I can simply lower the gamma a little bit, which would make the texture darker. I'll also lower the saturation a little. Very good. At the moment, the material has no reflectivity. Let's enable reflections by turning the reflection color to white. The material is very shiny, so I'll bring the glossiness value way down to 0.55. That looks much better. Now, if we look at examples of real wood, we can notice that surface glossiness isn't so uniform. The wood grains should have different glossiness, especially visible at glazing angles towards the sides of the object. We can use an image editing software to create a glossiness texture using the already existing diffuse map. In Photoshop, I have the diffuse map open. So first I'll desaturate it by clicking Ctrl Shift U. We won't need any color since the texture is going to be used to drive the glossiness parameter. Next, I'll open the camera roll filter and use one of the presets to make it look more contrasty. And finally, I can increase the contrast even further from the basic settings category. Maybe lower the overall exposure a little bit. Once we finish tweaking our glossiness map, we can bring it into 3ds Max. To match the rest of the texture's orientation, we need to make sure to plug in the UVW randomizer node into the mapping source. And then we can plug in the texture directly into the reflection glossiness map slot. Also, we need to make sure we set the color space type to none, since this is a texture that drives data and we don't want any gamma applied to it. As you can see, the grains of the wood have different levels of glossiness now, which makes the surface not so uniform and more interesting to look at. The next step would be to add some scratches around the edges. This would give the impression the object has been used for quite some time. So to accomplish this, we need to create another version of the wood material. We can use what we have so far and modify it slightly to serve as our used scratched wood material. I'll grab all of the nodes and make a copy of them. First, I'd like to make the wood grain much narrower. I'll increase the tiling of the V significantly. I think the damaged wood should also be brighter, so I'll increase the gamma in the color correction node 
to 1.15. Also, I'll bring up the gain as well and maybe decrease the overall saturation slightly. We can use additional texture of scratches to make the surface more rough looking. I have a texture which I can use. I'll plug it into the bump map slot. Let's decrease the strength a little and also change the direction of the bump. Currently, it's sticking out. The scratches are really big, so let me add a V-Ray randomizer node and change the tiling to let's say 20 on both U and V. I'll also add some variance in the scaling, going from 80% to let's say 120. Lastly, let's lower the reflectivity almost all the way. Great! Now we can use this version of the wood only in certain areas around the edges. To do that, we will need to mask off those areas, so let's go ahead and do it. To mix multiple materials, we can use the V-Ray Blend material. I'll create one and connect our main wood material in the base material slot. In the Code 1 slot, we'll need to connect the scratched wood material that we just created, but temporarily, we can use a dummy material, which would help in setting up the mask. Once we have the masking ready, we'll switch it with the wood material. Let me make the dummy material a really bright red color, so we can see what we are doing. Now, we get 50-50 mix between the wood and the bread material. We can make use of the V-Ray Curvature node to find where the edges of the object are. Let me create one and connect it to the Blend Amount slot. We need to switch the mode to Convex. That would make sure we are getting the edges in opposed to the crevices. Because we only need a thin line on the actual edges of the geometry. Good! You can start to see where the mask is in red. We need it to be more prominent, so let's increase the output max color value to 10. The mask looks great so far, but it's very uniform all around. We need to break those perfect lines on every edge to make it appear more natural. We can use some sort of noise and multiply it by the V-Ray curvature. Let's create a dent map and also a V-Ray comp text node. In source A goes the V-Ray curvature and in source B the dent map. Let's also change the operator to multiply. We need to adjust the size of the dent map. Currently, it is very big. Let's go for a much smaller value. We can also lower the strength a little. Let's swap the colors. This looks much more interesting. We can also bring down the contrast by changing the black and white values slightly. We can do one more layer of masking to randomize even further. Let me copy the V-Ray Comp Text and Dent node and connect the existing mask to Source A. We can make this dent map bigger in size so it can eat away bigger chunks of the line. I'll lower the contrast a little bit more. And now let's change the dummy material with the actual scratched wood material that we've prepared earlier. Great! Now the edges look worn out and overall the object appears more used. Alright, usually over time the parts that stick out in the object get more wear and tear and the parts that go in accumulate more dirt. Let's add that to our material here to make it look even better. Again, we can reuse our main wood material and slightly modify it to surface our dirty wood material. We can desaturate the diffuse almost completely. And then we can mix it up with some noise. Let me bring in a noise node and plug it into the diffuse. First, I'll reduce the size to 1. I'll also use the fractal noise mode to bring in more details. Then I'll increase the lower threshold a little bit to make the noise more contrasty. Now, instead of using pure black color, let me change it to dark shade of green. The white color we can replace by the color corrected wood from earlier. Very nice. As a final step, we need to lower the reflectivity by a lot, since usually dirty surfaces don't tend to be so reflective. Again, we need to set up the masking for the dirt, so let's use the red dummy material once again. We can use the V-Ray Dirt node to create our mask. 
Let me create one and connect it to the blend amount slot. Let me swap the black and white colors first. As you can notice, the lower part of the object is getting completely masked off because it considers the ground as well. To fix this, let's enable consider the same objects only option. Now we need to make the mask stronger. If we click on the occluded color, you'll notice it's already pure white. To be able to boost the white color further than the value of 1, we can use a V-Ray color node. We can plug it into the occluded color slot, make it white and set the RGB multiplier to a higher value. This way we can effectively make our mask stronger. Back in the V-Ray dirt settings, we can set the distribution value to 0. This would make the mask more spread out. We can also introduce a little bit of bias in downwards direction, simulating gravity. I'll set the bias on the z-axis to 0.1. To randomize the shape of the mask, we can use a texture map in the radius parameter. I have a simple black and white texture that would work nicely. I'll plug it into the radius connector. Since the texture has no grayscale values in it, some of the areas are completely not visible. This type of look could be a desired effect for cases such as peeled paint or something like that. For dirt though, I think we can lower the contrast a little. I'll plug the texture map to a color corrector node and use the lift offset value to shift all of the tones. The effect is a little strong so we can lower the radius value to 1. We can add even more dirt in the crevices, the places that are very hard to reach. I'll copy the V-Ray curvature node from the previous mask, switch its mode from convex to concave this time. We can use a V-Ray complex node to add the curvature node to the dirt node and then simply use that in our mask. The effect is a little too strong, so I'll lower the output max color to 2.5. Great, now all that is left to do is to swap the dirty wood material with the red dummy material. As a final step, we can add one more layer of dust that has accumulated over time on top of the object. Let's use the dummy material once again. For the masking part, we can use a fall off node. We need to make a mask only for the top surfaces. For that reason, let's change the fall off direction to the world Z axis. Let's also swap the black and white colors to reverse the mask. Let's also change the fall off type to towards away. Nice, the mask needs some contrast, so we can use the mix curve to do that. Let's add a point and use it to make more of a curve instead of a straight line. We can also right click the point and choose smooth. This way, we can mask off only the surfaces that are pointing up and add dust only in those areas. Now, instead of using red in the diffuse, let's change it to mid-gray. Dust is not reflective at all, so we'll skip adding reflections altogether. We can add a little bit of sheen to make it look more interesting. I'll add a bright yellowish color. With the dust layer completed, we can consider our wooden material finished. In this video, we went over the process of creating a realistic wood material. We started with building a base wood material. After that, we've proceeded to adding multiple layers on top of it. One layer added some damage around the edges, another layer added dirt around certain areas of the object. Finally, we finished by adding a little bit of dust on top of the object. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and helpful. Please share your suggestions for tutorials for other types of materials in the comments below. Thank you for watching.